What's going on everybody? Welcome to part 9 of our Python for Finance tutorial series. In the tutorials leading up to here, we've learned how to get some data, we've learned how to manipulate some of that data, and we've learned how to visualize a bunch of data. Now, in this tutorial, what we're going to be doing is, since in the visualization of a bunch of data, basically creating the correlation table of all of our data, we saw that sure enough, with pricing data, there are definite relationships between companies. Sometimes it's very certain companies or whatever, or groups of companies, but there are definitely relationships there. And the question is, can we get a machine to recognize those relationships? So my kind of thesis as we move forward is that, okay, groups of companies are likely to move together either up or down, but it's not necessarily always going to be the case that they move exactly at the same time as each other. Someone's going to be a first mover, someone's going to lag. So the question is, can we take, you know, a lot of times people look at one company at a time period. So they'll look at the pricing history of a single company and they'll chart patterns of just that company or something, or they'll use an indicator on just that company to predict whether that company will go anywhere. I'm not really someone who buys into that. Um, I need, there's gotta be something more. Uh, but the question is, in my mind, what if we, sure, we're still gonna use just pricing data, but what if we take into account the movement of all other companies, as well as the current company in question? Will that actually give us a real edge? So basically the way I'm gonna do it is pricing data, we're gonna convert that to percentage change, so everything's normalized. Um, Percent change data will be our features. So with machine learning, everything becomes features and labels. The features define something and the label is basically the target. In our case, we're gonna say buy, sell, or hold. Um, and we're gonna to try to label everything as a buy, sell, or a hold. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna take all of the feature data and the way that we're gonna generate whether it's a buy, sell, or hold is we're gonna ask the question, at least on the training data, did the price based on these features right here within the next seven days of trading, within the next seven trading days, did price go up more than 2%? If yes, that's a buy. Did it fall more than 2%? If yes, that's a sell. If it did neither of those things, it's a hold. We'll continue holding this company. Okay, so that's, that's the overarching plan. And now we actually have to execute that. It's going to take probably like three or four tutorials to do it, but we're gonna do it. So let's get started. So first of all, what we're gonna do is define process data for labels. Your labels are your target. It's basically the classification. So uh, we're just passing ticker. So each model that we generate is gonna be on a per company basis, but each company is going to take into account the pricing data of all other companies in the S&P 500. So process data for labels for a specific ticker. We're going to say how many how many days? That's going to be seven days. So basically, how many days in the future uh, do we have to make or lose X percent? We're going to say seven days. So again, in the next seven days, does price go up 2%, down 2%, less than those or whatever? So, okay. So how many days? Seven. Then we're going to say DF to start is going to be pd.read CSV. Uh, SP500 joined closes.csv index underscore call equals zero. If you haven't been following along, this is going to fail. So if you're brand new to this tutorial, make sure you go to the previous ones. Tickers equals df.columns.values.to list. Um, not quite. Probably don't need to be doing to list. Dot values is probably good enough. I'm just so used to doing dot values dot to list. Uh, it's probably unnecessary, but whatever. Df dot fill in a zero in place will be true. Now what we're gonna do is for i in range between one and how many days plus one. So basically the range will go up to a certain point, but not not actually do that certain point. So we want to run seven days. We're going to start, if you do range seven, it will be seven things, but it starts at zero, where really we want to start at one. And so we want to start at one and we want to go all the way to basically what between one and eight, which will give us one through seven. If it's not clear to you, you can always just print I and you'll see what I mean, but you can take my word for it as well. So DF, and now we're going to create a nice custom data frame column name. It's going to be brackets underscore brackets D dot format ticker i um, so that column so basically it'll be 
um, ticker I. So it'll be, let's say we're doing Exxon Mobil, X-O-M. So it'll be X-O-M underscore, and let's say it's day two, two D. So this will be on day two into the future. What is the value? The way that we're going to get that is, um, and we're going to say, what is the value in percent change? So, so basically it's today's price, um, or I'm sorry, it's the price in two days from now minus today's price divided by today's price times 100. So um, DF ticker dot shift negative I. So when you shift things, you're either shifting them up or you're shifting them like down. In this case, we actually want to shift them negatively because we want to get the future data. So what this is going to do is it's literally like here, let's see, this would be your, your leftmost column and then you've got a column here. Let's say you're, you're going to, and then you've got data. The future data is like down here. So when you shift negatively, you're shifting up, right? So you're getting that, that future data. I hope you like my visualizations. So, so now, so we've, we're shifting up by I numbers. This, in this case, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's how we're getting the future you know, value in the future, minus DF, so percent change, new minus the old, divided by the old, times 100. So the new is the future value, minus the old is today's value, which is DF ticker, because again, we, we created these columns to, rather than saying adjusted close, since we combine them all into one major CSV file, it's just about the ticker name. So new minus the old, and then we're going to say, um, Actually, we want that to be all together. New minus the old divided by DF ticker, and that's enough. So that kind of went off the screen a little bit, but my big text is worth it, I think. Um, so anyways, that's how we're going to generate that new column. Let's see if I can get it all in. There we go. Looks good. So there's our new column. We're going to do that for every new day. So if you wanted to look 30 days into the future, this you would just need to change it that single value. And you can play with that to see um, how that affects things. In general, I think <clears throat> if something's lagging the other companies by 30 days, it might not be correlated anymore. <laughs> so I don't know. And that just made me think too, don't forget what I said before about correlation. We are, we're, we're checking the correlation for like years of data. And in this case, we're training on years and years, like almost a decade or more than a decade and a half. You almost like don't want to do that because chances are certain companies' relationships to each other have changed significantly over time. You really only want to look back probably like one or maybe even two years, uh, but you would need a whole lot more data than what we have. So um, you really would probably need more than than daily, you know, one day data. It's just one day data is free, so that's why we're using it. Anyway, DF fill in a just in case we have some with uh, zero in place equals true and then return tickers df. So uh, at this point, we're able to process data for a ticker. Let me go ahead and run it just to make sure. We're not gonna do anything further at this point, but I just wanna make absolutely certain that it, it, it runs, it doesn't throw an error or whatever for us. Um, I'm prone to typos because I'm typing and talking at the same time. Looks like it worked. Well, um, so far. <laughs> we'll see if it returns what we want. So that's it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we're gonna kind of continue working on this. We're gonna actually, in this case, we started processing the actual data itself and creating the future values. And in the next tutorial, we're actually going to write some functions that will map to these columns now that will check these columns to see did price raise or fall or whatever by whatever number we choose. I think we'll probably go with like about 2% or something. So anyways, uh, questions, comments, concerns, whatever, leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next tutorial.